All right, part three of the mini series. Let's go over in detail a little bit more about lighting. So now let's talk a little bit about the setup. Um, this will be part three of the mini series light. Okay, we're going to get in a little bit more detail on the light. I know I kind of went over a little bit about it on episode one, but we're going to go in a little bit more in depth here with light and what you get. And this is in the afternoon now in the fall, so you can see that the, the sun is coming in and really starting to kiss the plants at a different angle. Um, it's, I don't know how, how well this is going to work, but yeah, it's, it's, it's getting lower in the sky, so it'll start coming more directly into the windows and actually kissing the plants. It'll be a little bright on some of them. So this is when you have to start moving them around and making sure that they're not getting too sunburned, but they're all getting the right amount of light. Here's just a little spotlight on the, uh, the beautiful uh, bulb phyllum by Florum. That has been, this is the fourth time it's bloomed for me now. It's bloomed on every new growth so far. I've been wanting to repot it, but I've had to wait but uh, I'll wait. We'll see if the next new growth pops up a spike next. Plus it's already putting out a new growth to make another bulb. So this thing is really doing well. Really vigorous, vigorous good plant. Here you can just see how the light's coming through the windows now and kissing the new, the new green leaves, lighting them up a little bit. My path, Carla Clem, getting ready to bloom. Agent Ella, another new spike coming up on this one. The other one's starting to lose its flowers. I don't know how that's backlit really bad, but. Okay, so here's what it looks like at night. Like I said, at sunset, the lights come on and they'll be on for a few hours after sunset. Now, some people don't like the hue that the grow lights give it. Um, you know, it can be a little bit purplish. doesn't give you an exact example of the actual color of the plants. You gotta look at those at daylight to just kind of make sure you're monitoring how green or yellow their leaves are. Um, but yeah, this is, and, and you got to be careful where you put your plants too. Um, that LED is the Mars Hydro LED light, and it puts out a lot of light. So I have it at the very top, but it, it lights these here very well. Actually, you can even, you're getting a lot of the LED light over here on these plants, which is kind of interesting. And then down below, um, th this is just a regular four foot fluorescent light with grow lights in it, which are not cheap. Um, those grow lights, which are not cheap, also only last for six months. After six months, you need to replace them because they don't have the same potency in the grow spectrum of light that the orchids need. And a lot of people don't know that, and they, they use them too long, and then they're not really getting the benefits, but they're still using the electricity. And um, one of the little trivia question about me is I'm very green. I, um, I don't waste water. I don't waste electricity. I try to save as much as I can. Um, I re do a lot of recycling, go out of my way sometimes to make it just a little bit better without, you know, wasting that energy. It, uh, it makes a difference. If we all did it, it'll, it'll make a bigger difference. But, so I don't want to see um, me running electricity and somebody having to make that electricity for a light that's not actually doing what it's supposed to do. So if you really want to use the four-foot fluorescent lights that are grow lights, you have to replace them every six months. And that's expensive. Okay, so within a year and a half, you could have paid for one of these Mars Hydro LED lights that are going to last about 60,000 hours or more. And there will be no change in the, in the light quality during that time. So uh, the other thing I like too is it also has a fan in it, so it moves air up here. So you get a little bit of ventilation, a little circulation around here. There's a, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but 
There's a little intake on the top, so it sucks air down in and then pushes it out through the sides. So there's some air circulation around there too, which is beneficial to the plants. But again, what, what I do is, since my growing light time during the day is shortened during the fall and winter, um, what I do is I just have it come on before sunrise for an hour or two. Sunrise comes, it goes off. Then at night, at sunset, it comes on and then it'll run for a few hours after sunset just to give me that nice long growing season that the plants are used to in their native natural habitat. This Bulbophyllum biflorum is blooming again. The petals, the little centers are covered up right now. And during the day those will be open and you'll be able to see the flapping lips. Uh, 2015 Orcalox Anonymous Project plant new growth. Uh, this was the one that bloomed initially for me. Oh no, no, this one was. Then I grew this one that didn't bloom. Then I grew this one that did bloom. You saw those. Now this one's growing, so that's looking good. Uh, there's a Jean May by BL Morning Glory in the back with some really big bulbs that grew on just a, sh just a spike, no sheath. And then there's this cluster of growth. One, two, three, four, five buds that came out of a sheath. Um, there's also a small sheath on one of the far leaves. You can't see it right now, and I'm not going to move them right now, but uh, that one's fattening up like it's going to have a bud in it also. The BC uh, Yellowbird, its flowers are on its way out. I didn't see any new spikes yet, so I might be transplanting this real quick into a bigger pot, but there's still a bunch of new growths that are growing, so that's good. Yeah, that's just a little quick update on the lighting issue. Um, and you're going to have to move your plants around to find where they like the light. Now that the seasons are changing, you really have to pay attention because as the sun gets lower in the south, it comes directly in on these plants. So some of these plants I'll have to move away from the window a bit when I start seeing a little bit too much of the uh, purple freckles. So once they get too many purple freckles, then they're not able to um, use their chlorophyll to actually turn that light into their power and energy, right? So uh, you really have to pay attention, you know, when you have big windows like this and the, the seasons start to change, how the light is changing on your plants. But everybody seems to be doing well right now. I don't have any major things to move around. Might have to move some of the little seedlings around and get them back a little bit, but other than that, it's all looking pretty good. I'm getting some freckles. I don't know if you can see them in this lighting on my big cat girl here on the new growths. The existing growths that are all good and grown and healthy, they don't freckle as much as like the new growths do. You could probably see some of the freckles on the sheath on that new growth there. Then uh, this new growth here has a little bit, and so does this one. What do you think, Ella?
You think that was a pretty good video? You gonna do the outro for me? No? Okay. But yeah, if you have questions about um, anything on the video, any kind of lighting issues or things that you're seeing, um, uh, I do have another video, a couple videos on that LED light. I really like it. Mars Hydro, never had a problem with it. It works great. It's powerful. It's not that big. It costs $68, but you're going to save that if you're using fluorescence. Um, you'll save that in a year to a year and a half. One, it uses a less, less electricity. Two, you don't have to replace the bulbs every six months, and those bulbs are not cheap. So, you know, just the bulbs alone in, in 18 months, you would have uh, paid for that Mars Hydro, and the electricity usage is less. So you're going to save, I'd say maybe a year, sometime a little bit after a year, you'll, it'll already have paid for itself.